Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Swagman XC2 two-bike platform rack on our 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Now this can be an excellent way of just kind of getting started into biking and getting some of our bikes up onto the road, up to the trailhead with us. As you can see, we do have some frame contact on here though, so if you're looking away of getting those carbon frame bikes up to the trailhead with you, unfortunately, this won't be a great option. This frame contact will start warping and deteriorating those carbon frames. However, with 35 pound weight capacity per bike, we are gonna get most of our standard and mountain bikes up on here with no problem. Just make sure that we are watching that weight capacity. Now with this middle mount too, as you can see, we are getting a lot of different coverage on here. So I don't think we're gonna have too many issues with those step throughs, wind bikes or kiddos bikes, as this is a very versatile system that can actually ratchet down. Keep in mind though, you might have to finagle these around, just how they're set. If you have a lower bike on here, obviously putting this one on first and then this other one. However, makes it very versatile to get a multitude of bikes up on here. As you can see too, we have a pretty simple design here with this platform rack. We just have two wheel hoops actually holding this in. A great thing about these guys though, is they are adjustable. So things I like about this guy, great entry model, especially for the versatility. We can get a whole bunch of different friends, start biking with us. A couple different family members too can actually utilize this. And just that adjustment makes it real easy to get a different wheel set for us depending on our bike. So I really like how easy it is to use. It's extremely lightweight as well. And popping this off makes it very, very easy. All we wanna do, come up to this trigger lever, lever right here, push that in popping off our hooks like so. And when I go ahead and take this off, I like to make sure that I do have a hand on my bike. We don't want that tilting in our vehicle and hurting that at all. So we can just go ahead, pop that last lever. I just set those arms to the side like so. Then we go ahead and take our bike off, watching our pedals as we do, and we are ready to hit the trail. So extremely easy to pull off, not too much finagling as you can see and those arms are very easy to ratchet down. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Just simply walk right up, make sure we're fitting our track and our arms are appropriate. You can hear that ratcheting down. Not gonna have any issues with that popping off like so. And again, as you can see, makes it very versatile. We are gonna get most of a lot of bikes on here. It looks like that's gonna be our lowest set. So if we are having any of those step throughs, hopefully we are be able to get those horizontal mounts like so. Again, this guy can just ratchet down right after it. So extremely easy to use. Now with any hitch mounted accessory, we are gonna add a little bit of length to our vehicle. So let's go ahead and check that out real quick. From the rear of our bumper to the very end of our wheel hoop, gonna be at 21 inches. Looks like our hook might extend a little bit further at about 23 inches. So just a little bit more additional length there. In the Outlander though, nothing too crazy by far. So I don't think we're gonna have too many issues with that. Now with this guy, it is a fixed point system. So we don't actually have a way of collapsing that down. We do have a few options though with this guy. A great thing, we do have a hatchback as you can see, and we definitely wanna be able to access that cargo. In the middle here, we can see we have a lot of pins. It looks a little, you know, a little jumbled up. However, as you can see right here, I just pull that middle pin like so. That's gonna go ahead and let me drop down this arm actually. Go ahead and get this guy kinda out of the way like so. We'll go ahead and push this guy either this way or this way to actually clear that. We can reinsert this pin if we need to to hold it. However, for today, we're just gonna go ahead and pop open this hatch. As you can see, that's gonna allow us to easily sling this hatch open. Now I can get in, I can get that cooler, I can get those helmets, whatever I need without having to fight over the seats. Now this guy does kind of protrude a little bit in the way, so maybe if we were going for some groceries or something, another quick little thing we could do is actually bring this guy up and out of the way. Now you start getting a little bit finicky here, so you can see that this is actually gonna be in the way. However, However, now, if I needed to, I could step that up. Don't have a good way of actually holding that in when that mass is down, but still nice that we can kind of make it versatile. Get in here if we really have something heavy to get it out of the way. So I really like that. Again, being able to access that hatch is very, very important, especially we want to have that cargo and still utilize it. We'll go ahead and set this mast up and show you guys in its put away position. And one thing that's great about this bike right guys is of how lightweight it is. So I can easily see us pulling this off and on with no trouble at all. Not gonna take too much time to actually do other than your user, user air like so. This arm's getting a little bit away of our little adjustable knobs there as you can see. 
So now once we get those out of the way and in position, that pen becomes very easy to reinsert. I really like this position. You can see if we bring that arm up, it's really gonna condense this down. What that's great for when we pull it off and get in the garage, it's not gonna take off a lot of room. I can see a lot of people in apartments too, you know those, those outside closets. This one could fit really, really nicely in there once we actually get it condensed all the way down. And again, as you can see, quick and easy to do so. It's just one pin there. Again, our arm, just a little bit in the way. And you can see where this system has a little qualms, you know, it all kind of is just working together, but they're extremely easy to move. They just take a little bit of time to do so. But I really like in this put away position, as you can see, extremely easy to fold up and get out of the way. Now, another important dimension to keep in mind is our clearance to the ground. So let's go ahead, pop this arm down, making sure we're not having too many issues there. As you can see, our wheel hoop should be quite well out of the way. Let's go ahead and give a quick little clearance here. From the ground to the bottom, looks like we're about 18 and a quarter inches from the ground to our platform. So definitely don't think we're gonna have too many issues there, but keep in mind, as those front wheels go up, the back will go down, and so will our hitch mounted accessories. So definitely something to keep in mind. However, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the very end of here and at 15 and three quarters, definitely gonna be a little bit lower than our bikes, which is something that we actually do want. If we want any contact, we will make sure we're not hitting those bikes, making sure we're not having any kind of damage that way. So extremely easy to make sure that that's up and out of the way. I don't think we're gonna have too much issue with that clearance. However, you have a very steep driveway. It's something to keep in the back of the mind. And if we're doing any off-roading, I'd definitely be a little careful. Moving our way down the shank here, you can see we do have an inch and a quarter shank. However, we do have a two inch sleeve adapter today to allow us to utilize our two inch hitch. And that's where this guy really shines too. I mean, it's pretty standard to start seeing these around. However, still makes it very versatile. And I really do like that. On the end too, we do have an anti-rattle threaded hitch bolt here. And this is just bringing, bringing this to, in line with our hitch, making it part of one system. We just have a pin on the very end to make sure it holds in place. But as you can see, as I'm shaking this guy, I'm gonna be shaking the entirety of the vehicle. Now keep in mind, you do have a little bit of play up on these guys. So if you are transporting this position, you might have a little bit of issue. However, that anti-rattle threaded hitch bolt is gonna be doing a good job of keeping our bike stable as we get on the road. So make for a nice smooth ride for ourselves our bike rack and our bikes as we go. I really do like that rise in the shank too. Just make sure we're not having any, any, any issues with our clearance as we get on the road. Well, the Swagman has a lot of advantages to it. Obviously that price point, it's really hard to beat, especially if we're just getting two bikes up on the trails with us. However, some things it lacks is a locking system. Now you can pick those up, but that does really start adding to that price point. However, if you're looking for a way of just really starting to get going on the weekends, this can be a great starting option. Well, I think that about does it for our look at the Swagman XC2 2 Bike platform rack on our 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. I'm Bobby. Thank you for watching. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side to side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which will see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. And finally, we have the full speed bumps where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.